What's up guys, it's Rowan here from Art of Smart TV. Now, the HSC is one of those challenges where when you get an assessment back, particularly early in the journey, it can be really disheartening and it can honestly feel like you know the whole HSC is screwed, that you just want to quit. Now this is so far from the truth. Um, you know, time and time again, we see students dramatically transform their results uh, and take a, a poor result and end up turning it into an amazing result that enables them to get their goal, ATAR, and entry into their dream course. And so today I'm gonna to be actually chatting with Maddie, a student who did just this. And she was studying advanced mathematics and, and got assessment results in the 30%, which you know was incredibly disheartening. But by the end of the journey, she had turned that into a 70% plus HSC mark, which represented a staggering 40% mark turnaround. So we're gonna find out from Maddie today you know, how she did it, uh, what were the steps that she took to turn that mark around? And in doing so, hopefully give you some, you know, some motivation, but also you know, um, something that you can hold on to as proof that you too can change your results for your subjects. Uh, for your HSC. So, welcome Maddie. Why, hello there. <laughs> now, I'd love to dive in because I think this is a, you know, a really great turnaround story. Y you got your uh, assessment back for maths. Um, was it year 11, year 12? When, when was it, you got that assessment result that was just uh, very surprising? Uh, year, year 11, but I've never been that great in math even beforehand, so. Okay, so it wasn't, you know, year, 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 nine, year seven to 10, maths was challenging. Yeah. It wasn't your favorite subject. You take advanced maths. You then get this assessment result back. What was the result? Uh, first one was about, I want to say 38. I want to say 38. 38, wow, okay. And so you get this 38. How did you feel when you got it? Not great. <laughs> it was not a great feeling, but I knew I wanted to stick to math because it was one of the subjects I knew I needed for uh, my goal for wanting to uh, get into uh, game design development. Awesome, so you didn't have the option of dropping it. You got the 38 and you're thinking, bummer, mm. you know, I've got to keep this because I'm going to do game design, but I I'm on 38, like, I'm going to have to do something about this, okay? So um, what did you do? You got the 38, what did you do? What were the first things that you decided you needed to, to take action on to try to turn things around? Uh, at first, I just like, I. I, as long as like I completed the homework, I did some additional like questions that were similar to the exercise we did, but I thought I needed I needed to do more, so I came to Art of Smart, went to like the the lessons about every Saturday, and it really helped me a lot because I like uh, I went to a class, so there was like a couple of people that are in the same situation as me, like getting like lower marks but they also helped me get better because they were like better in some topics than I was. So just to, to clarify there, so you jumped in and it was a class led by Tom, I believe. Yep. It was a small advanced math class um, and the focus was, yes, very much on I think working with you and, and the other students to really try to, you know, help you get a better understanding and, and change your results. So you, it sounds like one of the first things you did once you got this result was to ask for help. Um, and that help was coming along and getting some support here. Um, beyond um, asking for help, what else did you start doing a little differently for maths to try to change your results? Not gonna lie, I wasn't the best student in math. Like, I didn't cause any disturbances, but like, I would get easily distracted. So I maintained more of my focus on my work, even though I was in a class with my best friend. So, hard, but like, manageable. I'd always encourage her to do work as well, so. So this was at school you're talking about? You'd, in, you'd maintain focus? Yeah. Okay, so your first step was realizing that you needed to make better use of your class time at school. Because yeah. you were maybe a little distracted yeah. from time to time, okay. So make better use of class time, focusing more. That's step one, okay. What else were you doing to try to turn your results around for maths? I encouraged uh, my best friend to like, we should do like study sessions together because to be honest, we're not great. And she's like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> awesome, so you teamed up with a friend. Mm. Was that weekly study sessions? Like how often were you doing these sessions? Uh, it, like it wasn't that often, but like, I wanna say a few times a month. And like we would do like the entire day, just math, like 
full on. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, that, that, I know you just said it doesn't sound like a lot, but that, that sounds like a lot to yeah. me. You know, that's a, at least a three times a month, you said, and it was full day, deep dives. Um, and what were you doing in those days? What, what were you doing? Were you teaching each other? Well, like, at first we'll be, like, trying to solve a problem together because, like, we might not get it. But, like, with discussion and, like, we might just go through the textbook saying, uh, like, trying to understand the concept a bit more, like, written down. We'll be like, oh, so that's how you do it. <laughs> so, like, once we get, like, that first problem all done and dusted, we'll go to the next one that, like, might be similar and, like, we'll just practice it together over and over again. There'll be some points where she'll be doing a problem by herself and I'll be doing a different problem and we'll be like, hey, do you get this? And she'll be like... So you check each other then? Yeah, we'll check each other. And it sounds like it was a lot more fun and motivating. Mm. I mean, because it sounds like maths wasn't your favourite subject. Is that fair to say? Was it your, your least favourite? Uh, it wasn't my least favourite, but it wasn't... It was down the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so it sounds like by studying with a friend, it made it more motivating, uh, more exciting. Mm. Um, and it sounds like you kept each other accountable on those study days. Is that right? So if you got distracted, would your friend go, come on, Maddie, you know? <laughs> What are you doing? Let's well, it's kind right. of vice versa. I would keep her on track. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. Yeah. That, that you would both keep each other accountable, definitely. Mm -hmm. So then you did these study days and study sessions with your friend. Mm -hmm. We've talked about better use of class time. What else were you doing to help turn your math results around? Well, like besides working with a friend, I would work by myself a lot because you can't really bring a friend to an exam. Like, what a, what a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I wish. Um, but I would do a lot of work just by myself, like getting like some questions done, like dedicating some of my time to math, like to just benefit me. <laughs> awesome. So you would actually be, and that was going above and beyond the homework that you were given from school. Yeah. Okay. Cause I think that's what we highlighted. Your first approach was just doing the, the minimum homework from school didn't quite work. Okay. So then you've taken on this approach of, well, I'm going to have to go above and beyond. Mm. And so you were then doing your own independent work outside of school homework. Mm. What were you doing in that independent work that you were doing? Okay, so when we get set homework, we're just given like, we might be given all of it. And then that might be like a little like challenges exercise that I, I would do because I'm thinking, eh, like... I wouldn't usually do it, but why not? I got time. So you would start doing the more challenging questions, in essence, like these little extension challenge questions. Um, and so it sounds like that was a key thing that you started exposing yourself to, which you weren't doing before. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Now, um, you know, you were in a class with Tom. H how did being in the class with Tom for maths at Art of Smart help? Uh, it was a lot of fun. Like, his, he brought a lot of energy and passion to math, which I've never seen in any other person. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's awesome. That's great to hear. He's very passionate about math, that's for sure. So, and uh, so Grady, you know, he brought all this energy and passion. How did that help you? What were you guys doing in the class that helped you? Uh, he just made the class a lot more fun. Like, even when we're, like, doing work, he'll be like, okay, for this certain amount of time, you're going to be doing a solid, like, a solid amount of work and, uh, like, he'll come around, help us. But like there were fun times too. It wasn't all like grind. It was yeah. it was yeah. There was a bit of like fun. And yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. So then, and it sounds like what you were doing in the class, just from what you highlighted, was it sounds like Tom was really trying to expose you to questions, challenging questions, and put some timing, time conditions around it. Is that what you guys found that you you, you were doing in the classes? Uh, it wasn't really like he would say, like do the, like do work in a this amount of time like we could go at our own pace which I liked I didn't feel rushed I didn't feel like stressed to like complete it I took my time to figure out what the question was asking me and like went step by step by myself like how to like how to do it and then um in the lead up to your you know your trials and your exams for maths um you know what um what what sort of preparation were you doing I would go to like uh my uh, what are you, uh, common room and... So this is at school? Yeah, yeah this is at yeah. school. So, some afternoons I decide to like do a bit more questions and yeah, I'll just do like extra work if I had time after school. And this was, uh, this was 
particularly for your trials or your HSC? Because obviously HSC, you've got Stuvac and you've got holidays. Was this more before your trials? This was before my trials. Before uh, exams, it would be like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do as many questions before the exam because I knew that would just like stress me out. So I would try to like calm myself a bit and like, and if, if I feel up to it, I might do like a couple of questions. I'll be like, oh yeah, that's right. Or like revise the like concepts. Okay, so it sounds like you've got this approach then that you sort of did where you would do past questions. Is that correct? Like you're talking about past HSC questions when you were saying questions. You would try to do some of those every day for you know an hour or so, right? And then in the immediate couple of days or maybe the immediate day before an exam, counterintuitively, it sounds like you would stop doing questions because you wanted to then reduce the stress levels that you were experiencing. Is that right? Yeah, because like I, I have a couple of friends who can get like stressed out before an exam and it doesn't look fun. So like I would just keep myself in a, in a good state of mind, ready for an exam and just try my best. And that's fantastic. And so, um, you know, to, to conclude this story, you know, you're now, you've now been accepted into what degree at university? Bachelor of Game Design and Development in Macquarie Uni. Which is your goal degree as well, is that correct? Yep. So well done. And so you needed advanced maths to get into that degree. You did it, you got through it, you turned your marks around, you ended up getting, you know, a, a band for 70% plus mark, which is fantastic for, for maths. And it's meant that you can now do your dream course, which is really exciting. So I know, uh, you know, we're all really excited for what, you know, the degree is gonna mean for you. Um, do you have any final feedback you would like to share? Any advice for a HSC student who's struggling with advanced maths? I say just dedicate more time to math because it's very hard to get used to because there's a lot of work. There's a lot of concepts you have to go through. I just say, exposure and the motivation to do math because I know it's not and uh it might be some people's favorite I know a couple but like it's kind of hard to get into math not gonna lie awesome so simple simple message at the end of the day get motivated do more <laughs> <laughs> pretty much <laughs> awesome so there you have it guys we've just heard from Maddie you know how she transformed uh, you know her results from the 30s you know the 70s a 40 percent improvement for HC Advanced Maths and how by keeping it, it also meant that she was able to get into her dream course at University Game Design and Development, which required having advanced levels of maths um, you know, for that degree to really ensure that you would um, be you know, incredibly uh, strong, uh, a strong candidate for your study in that degree. So guys, all I wanna share at this is if you are not doing as well as you would like in advanced maths, know uh, that it is possible to turn things around and Maddie's story is proof that you can do it. Uh, as she said, ultimately, you know, if we had to boil this down, it's ask for help. Maddie did that early on and it enabled her to change her results. Um, you know, we've got an amazing team of teachers, tutors and mentors that can work with you to do so. And then get motivated and then you gotta do the work. There is no shortcut in maths for doing the work. All the best guys as you navigate the challenges of advanced maths for the HSC.